All right, we'll give everyone a minute to join. I think we're right at seven now. How are you doing, Chris? Hello, Jasmine, and hello, everybody joining us. Looking forward to a Woodford event and a Woodford evening today. Yes, I wish I had a, as an amazing setup as you, but when you come <laughs> here. Well, everybody should have one of these in their home, right? That's the way it should <laughs> I agree. Be. I agree. Okay, I guess I will go ahead and get started. Starting off with, uh, my name is Jasmine Lynch. For those who would want to know, I am the premium whiskey brand champion for Brown Foreman here in Atlanta. And I'm really excited because I know a lot of people will be joining here locally. And I wanted to give a huge shout out to Tower for making the product available. I hope that you guys were able to pick up a bottle or maybe a few of them because we will be tasting through all of the Woodford Reserve expressions today. And the Q&A feature is available. So while you're following along, don't hesitate to ask some questions because we will make time for that at the end of the tasting. So I hope you guys enjoy. I know I will because I always learn something new every time I get to listen in. Um, so please have fun and drink responsibly. And without further ado, here's Chris Morris. Oh, thank you, Jasmine. Hello, everyone uh, and all the Tower team. Thanks for uh, hosting us uh, tonight for a tasting of the Woodford Reserve family. Um, this is this is always fun because I mean we're in the spirits business and the spirits business is all about fun. If you can't have fun drinking a great bourbon, rye malt, wheat, and a double oak product, uh, get out of the room because this is going to be fun. But uh, tonight's uh, focus is on Woodford Reserve, of course, and I'm the master distiller. I've been the master distiller for the last 17 years, and I've been with the the brand since the beginning, so over 20 plus years. Um, and very, very proud to be able to present it to you all tonight. And again, as Jasmine said, look forward to some questions from each and every one of you. So our story goes back into the early 1990s when Brown Foreman's chairman, and we are a Brown Foreman product, the oldest spirits company in America that no one knows about because we don't have a brand called Brown Foreman. We are Woodford Reserve, Jack Daniels, Old Forester, Herodura Tequila, El Himador, Glendronic Single Malt Scotch, Ben Rioch Single Malt Scotch, Slain Irish Whiskey, Glen Glasshouse Single Malt Scotch. We are a global whiskey company and again owned and controlled by the Brown family in our founding city, Louisville in Kentucky. And of course, our Woodford Reserve Distillery is in Woodford County, Kentucky, over towards Lexington. So we're, we're about an hour's drive um, east of Louisville. And it was Owsley Brown II, the fourth generation of the Brown family, chairman of the board, as I mentioned, who had a vision, a concept, a challenge, whatever you want to call it, that we were going to create a new bourbon whiskey. This bourbon whiskey would have its own distillery and a distillery that would be open for people to come and visit, a home place in our parlance, a place where people can come and be at home and see the home of this whiskey. And that was a big challenge because when Mr. Owsley made this challenge, bourbon was in a, already had a generation of decline. It had been declining steadily since 1978. And many famous distilleries had just recently, recently closed. Stitzel Weller, Glenmore, Medley, Yellowstone had closed. We were down to nine distilleries in Kentucky. Hard to believe when there had been over 200 before prohibition. Famous brands were going out of existence or nearly extinct. And there was no Kentucky bourbon trail experience. There was nothing to visit. What a dark time it was. And that's when Owsley had his challenge. Let's do something different. Let's innovate. Let's do something different. And the flip side of innovation, of course, is others say, that's a good idea. Let's do that as well. And I'll never forget the day we opened the Wood Reserve Distillery, October 16, 1996. We invited the industry, as small as it was, to come to a big party. And uh, Elmer T. Lee and Booker No and Jimmy Russell and uh, Max Shapiro and Parker Beam and... Um, um, I'm missing, I'm, I'm so many were there and uh, you could just see the amazement on their eyes 
wow, this is something. This little abandoned historic distillery, Brown Foreman has restored it and launched this new brand that looks so different than every other bourbon. And it worked. Within three years, every distillery had opened its doors for tours and the Kentucky Bourbon Trail was founded. Since the launch of Woodford Reserve, when brands were going out of business, over 300 new Kentucky straight bourbon brands have introduced, been introduced to the market. And when Woodford Reserve became the 10th distillery in Kentucky, now we've got over 80 distilleries in Kentucky. And we're not talking these wonderful little craft distilleries. We're talking some major distilleries owned by international companies because bourbon whiskey is hot. It's cool, whatever term you want to use today. And it all begins with Woodford Reserve. Woodford Reserve was a change element in the industry that got it back on its track to its current success as evidenced by tonight. We wouldn't be having this chat tonight if it wasn't for Woodford Reserve introduction in 1996. And we got it all started with our bourbon and it's beautiful package. This package was by design because we weren't just going to make a bourbon for bourbon drinkers in Kentucky or in the South or in the United States. We were going to make a bourbon for the world. No one ever done that before. Think about that. When our founder of Brown Foreman, George Garvin Brown, created Old Forester in 1870, he was making a bourbon for a bourbon consumer in a bourbon market, Louisville, Kentucky. When Jack Daniels created Jack Daniels in 1866, he was making a Tennessee whiskey for a Tennessee whiskey drinker in rural Tennessee. That was their concept. But now in the 1990s, we're gonna make a whiskey for the world. And we had the aspirations that this whiskey would be enjoyed around the world, like the grape single malts and blends or a cognac or certainly the iconic Jack Daniels brand. And therefore it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't supposed to look like a common bourbon brand. It had to look cosmopolitan. It had to look contemporary. It had to look at home anywhere in the world. And that's where this bottle came in. And today it's sort of a common theme to have these bottles with very little labeling and different shapes, but this was radical in the 1990s. It changed the shape, the vision of bourbon. And boy, it sure did, because people go, what is that? I don't know what that is. And that led to a first sip. And you can be a pretty bottle. And maybe you'll buy a bottle for its looks once. But if you don't like what's in the bottle, you're not going to buy it again. So the whiskey had to be great, too. And obviously, we're a Kentucky company. And we were founded on a bourbon brand, Old Forester. And we were going to make Kentucky bourbon. And that's what we did. And those first number of years, it was slow going because we had to gain followers. And over time, this brand has gone from obscurity to becoming now the number one selling super premium American whiskey, period, in the world. That's a tremendous, tremendous feat for a brand that's just approaching 25 years of age. And you can literally find Wood Reserve pretty well around the world today, which is just Still, I can't believe that. That's incredible. So what made the whiskey special was the five sources of flavor concept that I developed. The five sources of flavor are common across all whiskeys, whether you're Scotch or Irish or Tennessee or bourbon or wherever whiskey's made in the world. It's going to be about where your flavor comes from. And you have five sources of flavor. And most distilleries will really pull a, just a couple of those flavor levers and not all in total. And we were designed to pull all five in total from our water to our grain recipe, to how we ferment the grain and water together, how we distill the flavor from that fermented resource, and then how we age in oak. Those are the five sources of flavor. And we made each one of them unique amongst all the whiskeys of the world to Woodford Reserve and each one have a discernible impact on our flavor profile. And that five sources of flavor concept will flow through the rest of the product portfolio, as you will soon learn. So if you have a glass, fill it with some Whiff Reserve bourbon, and let's talk about its flavor profile. Where does this flavor of Whiff Reserve come from? What are the flavors? Well, the five areas of American whiskey flavor are sweet aromatics, which is very strong for an American whiskey aged in a new charred barrel 
charred oak barrel. We know that uh, because that's where most sweet aromatics come from. Then fruit and floral. Do you have fruit, fruit and uh, floral notes? What are, are, is your spice character? Do you have grain and wood influence? So those are the five areas. Sweet aromatics, fruit and floral, spice, grain, and wood. Now, most whiskeys will be out of balance. In other words, one of those five areas will be the predominant flavor profile. Ooh, that's a spicy whiskey. Mm, that one's really woody. You understand, you appreciate that. But we also knew we had to attract as many people as we could around the world. In some markets, fruit is the preferred drink in the terms of they drink fruity beer in the Czech Republic, or they drink wine in Italy, or a brandy, a cognac in South Korea, or grain character, anyone who drinks a malty whiskey or a, a beer, of course, sweet aromatics, rum, cachaca, bourbon whiskey, those drinkers are around the world as well. And then what about grain, uh, uh, wood character, how many wines, how many beer, how many spirits, even think in Yeho tequila is spending time in an oak barrel and um, spice, spicy wine, spicy beer, spicy spirit. So again, we wanted to have a balance of the five areas of flavor to attract as many palates as we could. So balance is also part of the Woodford Reserve story. We've got the five areas of flavor and great representation in balance. So if you don't like a spicy whiskey, Woodford's not too spicy. If you like a spicy whiskey, Woodford's just spicy enough. And that goes for the other four areas of flavor. And that meant bringing these five areas of flavor uh, in to the five sources of flavor they originate from. So our water is special. We can't change the water. Well, we could, but we haven't. And we're using the original limestone water that brought Elijah Pepper to our distillery location in Woodford County in 1812, all documented, of course, via tax records. Everything is in tax records. So we're using the same limestone water that the Pepper family used over 200 years ago. And that water is heavy in its mineral content. It has a number of minerals in it that aid and deliver flavor and fermentation. And what makes it special is we do not have to filter our water as many distilleries do. So it's original limestone water. Fruit and floral notes are going to come from that water. Then it's our grain recipe. This bourbon is 72% corn, it's 18% rye, and it's 10% malted barley. Not too much corn, so it doesn't have a real corny note. Plenty of rye for just the right amount of spice. And then malted barley for an all-natural starch to sugar conversion and the malt shines through as nutty notes. Then we ferment. We have our own strain of yeast, which is becoming very rare in today's world, a proprietary strain of yeast that ferments for a long, slow period of time. Longest in the history of bourbon, five to seven day fermentations. And that builds esters, fruit notes, and a whole array of other flavor notes, acids, aldehydes, and other congeners. And then to make sure those flavors come to life, we did something dramatic. Because remember, we bought an old abandoned distillery. It didn't have any stills in it. It had been stripped of its equipment, closed in 1959. The old Pepper, the old LeBron Graham distillery in Woodford County. So we could put in the equipment and processes that we needed to make these flavors come to life. And one of those was pot stills. The distillery, when it was built, in 1838 was a pot still distillery. We brought pot stills back to Kentucky and we brought triple distillation to America. The first whiskey distillery in history to triple distill its whiskey like the Irish do. And that brings all of our flavors to life. Then the spirit goes into the oak barrel for maturation. And we have our own cooperage. We make our own barrels and we made a unique barrel for Woodford Reserve. It was the first whiskey barrel in history to be toasted like a wine barrel, then charred like a bourbon barrel. Toasted and charred. And then we enter that barrel at 110 proof, very low, very low entry proof. And we mature by flavor, not by age. So we're using five and a half to seven year barrels in our standard batching of Woodford Reserve. And presented at 90.4 proof, 
an old historic proof presentation that I think just works perfectly. And you have a very balanced, very complex, very rich Kentucky bourbon. And I cannot tell you what you know is in taste. Because when you have over 200 flavonoids, flavor compounds, all natural in this glass, in balance, provable scientifically, I don't know what you know. I don't know what you taste because we all have different palates. That's been the secret of Woodford Reserve. People find in it what they want to find in it. So again, if you want to find spice, you'll find the spice first. If you want to find fruit, you'll find the fruit spice. If you love sweet aromatics in a bourbon, you're going to find those first. So this is a very personal whiskey. This is so personal that again, I won't deem it fit to tell you what you taste. I'll tell you what I taste. I'll tell you what you know, and you might disagree. And that's great because this whiskey again is personal. And here's the trick. It changes all the time. I just had dinner earlier. What I had for dinner will impact what I know and taste or what you had at lunch or maybe the aroma in the air, uh, uh, the flowers in the air or, or the grass being mowed, the time of day. Did you just have a cup of coffee? It's going to change your perception of this wonderful Woodford Reserve. So it's also dynamic. It's alive in that glass. It changes. It'll change on the palate from sip to sip. This is a very unusual whiskey because it's fun. It, as I said earlier, it's fun. It's a fun whiskey. It's a, it's a fun industry, isn't it? So I am nosing some fruit and spice. The fruit I'm getting is is. Gosh, almost a, a stewed peach with some cherry thrown in. That's a fan. What a combination that is. And the spice has a hint of anisette, a hint of mint. Wow. Because, um, of course, dinner had some black pepper in it and had some other spices. So I'm not getting those. I'm getting different spices. So, again, you never know what you're going to pick up. Now, take a sip and sip again because your first sip is 90s on the, on the palate. Second sip you're more prepared to taste. So cheers, everyone. Yeah, I'm getting spice with a big slug of caramel and a big slug of vanilla. Mm. Again, coming after dinner, those sweet notes are coming after the spices I had. Mm. And there's that fruit, a little bit of orange coming in at the end very dynamic. So for 15 years, we focused on building the Wood Reserve bourbon brand. Build awareness, distribution, build fans of the brand. And after 15 years, it was the time to add a new member of the family, which will taste last, and that's Double Oaked, another great Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. So for 15 years, we focused on building bourbon, Really, for 17 years, we built on bourbon, building bourbon. And finally, time to add a whole new expression, Woodford Reserve Rye, followed by malt and wheat. And I'm going to change those bottles around so I can be in sequence here. Malt, then wheat. Now, these are part of the distiller select range. Notice they're in the same bottle, the same now classic flash-shaped bottle, because they have a common theme. They're Kentucky straight whiskeys, but they're not all bourbon, rye, malt, wheat. Back in 1935, when our industry was being defined by the federal government coming out of prohibition, the repeal of prohibition in 1933, Uncle Sam says, okay, you, you distillers, you can make four different straight whiskey types. It's in the regs, straight bourbon, straight rye, straight malt, and straight wheat. And of course, all the Kentucky distillers just rushed off to make bourbon. That's what we know how to make. That's what we, we created in the 1770s. And the distillers on the East Coast, Maryland, Virginia, Pennsylvania, on up, they rushed off to make rye whiskey. That's what we know how to make. That's our tradition. And it seems nobody made malt and nobody made wheat whiskey until Woodford Reserve is the first and only distillery to make 
the four 1935 authorized types of straight American whiskey, the first and only one. And each one shares the same five sources of flavor. It's the same water in all, that wonderful pepper spring water. It's the same yeast with the long fermentation, same equipment, of course. It's the same distillation process. It's the same barrel, the toasted and charred barrel, same warehouses, same batching concept, all presented at 90.4 proof. So if you think the rye is spicier than the bourbon, it's not because, oh yeah, it's 103 proof. No, it's 90 proof. The malt, boy, that's awful soft and sweet. It must be 80 proof. No, it's 90.4 proof. Everything's presented at the same proof. So if you see, nose, and taste the difference, there's one reason why. The grain recipe. These four great whiskeys differ only in the grain recipe. So what a point of comparison to taste them and to know they have the same water, yeast, fermentation, distillation, and maturation. And the only thing that's different is the grain recipe. And for three of them, they share the same three grains. The rye and the malt and the bourbon all have corn, rye, and malt in them. Only the wheat, which has those three grains, introduces a new grain, which is wheat, making it a wheat whiskey. So let's move on to our rye whiskey, which was next in introduction after Double Oaked. And it's been on the market now, oh, five, six years. I lose track of time anymore when things are so, so chaotic, as we know. And Wood Reserve Rye has been a load of fun. Now this recipe differs from the bourbon in that the bourbon, as I mentioned, was 72% corn. This is 33% corn. The bourbon is 18% rye. This is 53% rye. The bourbon is 10% malt. This is 14% malt. Same three grains and dramatically different ratios. And what a difference that makes. Everything else, as I mentioned, is the same. So this is spicy. Where the bourbon was balanced, this is not balanced. This is spicy. It's a rye whiskey, but it's still wood for reserve rye. So it has sweet aromatics. It has fruit. It has wood and grain character, but the rye is the predominant focus of this whiskey, and that's the spice character. So this is spicy. And again, I'll tell you, it's going to be spicy. I know we're all going to agree with that, but you might find more um, brown spice. You might find more savory spice, again, depending on the time of day, because this is a complex whiskey like our bourbon, and a complex whiskey is going to change a lot according to the mood, the time, what you eat, and etc. But this is spicy nonetheless. And this is an old recipe. This was an old Brown Foreman recipe for a brand we discontinued in the 1970s, early 1970s. It was called Old Watermill, and it was a rye whiskey. And again, it was discontinued. And I've taken that recipe, which was just numbers on a piece of paper, the ratios of the grain, and put them into the Wood Reserve Flavor Philosophy template. Because this, this whiskey had never been made in the 1880s with, at the Pepper Spring, with the current grain supply and our yeast. It was made at a different distillery, long clo closed long ago before Prohibition. And this is, again, an old pre-Prohibition rye whiskey from Kentucky put into the contemporary Wood Reserve model. So it's not a pungent rye. It's a, oh, I just, that was a little lemon tea on the nose right there. It's a comfort spice. It's a smooth, soft type of rye whiskey. And again, that brings balance to the rye whiskey category. There's so many wonderful rye whiskeys today that are up to 100% rye or 95% rye. Very few that are in the early, um, early um, uh, uh, to late 19th century rye re recipes of that little over 50% rye. And this is, this is one of them. So if you want to explore a range of rye whiskeys, this is certainly one to try. 
And then go to Old Forester right at 65% or a Jack Daniels right at 70 as you move up your, your rye ratio ladder and see what that rye does to the spicy character of the whiskey. So I just love this rye. And um, if it's no secret, I'm a bourbon drinker. And if I'm going to make a rye whiskey, I'm going to make a rye whiskey I like. And this is certainly the kind I like. And this is the most bourbon of rye whiskeys I think you're going to taste because that unique Woodford Reserve barrel certainly gives us those sweet aromatic notes that a bourbon drinker loves. Oh, yes. And the fruit, some tree fruit, some citrus, a little berry fruit, tea leaves, a mm, bit of honey. No caramel. It's honey. How the same barrel gives us different flavor. Just tremendous. So we had a lot of fun launching our Wood Reserve Rye, and it's doing so well for us. Thank you all for helping that. Now, um, two years ago, we brought out the first and only Kentucky Straight Malt Whiskey on the market. This is still a category into itself, unto itself. It's the only Kentucky Straight Malt Whiskey, period. And it's a Kentucky straight malt. It's not a single malt. It's not to be compared with a Glendronic or a Ben Rioc. It's not to be compared with anything. It's unique. How can you compare anything when you're unique? Well, compare it to the rye and the bourbon and to the wheat because it's part of the Wood Reserve family. Again, the same five sources of flavor, but we've just changed the grain recipe. So as a malt whiskey, this is 51% malt, and it's our distiller's malt. There's no smoke. There's no peat. It's very clean malt. 51% malt, a lot of corn. It's, an, it's an another old-style Kentucky recipe because most people don't know that Kentuckians made malt whiskeys before Prohibition. So this is 47% corn. Of course, we know corn gives you a lot of sweet character. And then it's 2% rye, a little, little dash of spice little dash of spice. Why did we do that? Because we're using a live yeast strain. Our yeast needs some of the nutrients supplied by rye. So it sort of forces us in to having this three grain recipe, which of course we understood and appreciate because again, it adds complexity to this wonderful whiskey. So again, 51% malt, 47 corn, 2% rye, 90.4 proof like our bourbon and rye whiskey. And this is out of balance. Just like the rye is out of balance, it's out of balance, though, towards grain character. Malty notes. It's literally like a malted milk ball, a malted milkshake. I can't describe it any better than that. Milk, chocolate, vanilla, malty notes. It's malt. It's all about malt. But it's with reserve malt. So as we get into it, you're going to taste fruit tropical fruit character. You're going to taste those little hints of spice, little sprinklings of nutmeg and cinnamon. The wood notes are there, toasted oak, and of course the sweet aromatics. So it's wood for reserve. It's complex, but it's out of balance like the rye is out of balance when you compare it to the bourbon. And that's a good comparison to make how malty or grain forward it is. Just a beautiful whiskey. So soft. Now, we're not selling a lot of malt because we haven't been making a lot of malt. Our malt, even though it's a permanent member of the family, when I tell you, when you, when you all go to a tire store and you see it, grab a bottle because it might not be there next week. It's going to come and go as our supplies uh, uh, allow. But it's here to stay. So it's going to be available every year on and on. But again, there's not a whole lot of it at any one time. So malt is beautiful. It's a whole different expression of whiskey. As is our newest release, which came out last summer. And it's as limited as the malt whiskey. And this is Wood Preserve Wheat Whiskey. Now, this has led to some confusion for bourbon fans. And I can understand that. It's not a wheated bourbon. It's not a bourbon with wheat in the recipe. It's a wheat whiskey. This is 52% wheat, 20% corn, 20% malt, 8% rye. Completely different recipe, a four grain recipe. 
And those of you who enjoy a, a wit beer, a wheat beer, recognize that wheat beers are very fruity. Wheat, as it ferments, creates lots of fruit character. So this is out of balance towards fruit. Now, it's not fruity like a wine or fruity like a fruity beer because it's a whiskey. Uh, it's fruity as a whiskey is fruity and not one that's been in a sherry care, ba a cask or a port pipe or something. It's only been aged in the new toasted and charred Woodford Reserve barrel. So the fruit is really berry fruit and some tree fruit, maybe a little vine fruit, but it's again, it has spice, 8% rye. It has the wood notes, the, the grain character. You can, you can taste the wheat itself and the sweet aromatic notes. So it is a wheat whiskey. Now, the fun thing about this family, they're all Kentucky straight whiskeys. You can make a Woodford Bourbon Manhattan, a rye Manhattan, a malt Manhattan, a wheat Manhattan, old fashioned, mint julep, you name it. These are straight whiskeys. They can stand up and go in any of the classic American cocktails. So that's another fun thing to try. Try a whiskey in each of your favorite cocktails at this, in the same ratios, and then maybe decide to rearrange your ratios to make the cocktail really highlight the whiskey. I mean, you can go either way. It's a lot of fun. For example, when I make a Woodford Rye Manhattan, I use dry vermouth. I, of course, I use sweet vermouth with the bourbon. I use different bitters. I use different garnishes, cherry, lemon, or maybe even a little bit of apple, apple slice. So have fun in trying these in classic cocktails. But boy, they are good. They are good. So we were out of sequence in introduction because after bourbon came double oaked. And boy, was this something special. Double oaked is still a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. It's never touched any barrel other than a new charred oak barrel. It just happened to have been in two. Double the oaked process, the oaking process. And this is a special whiskey and it's in a different bottle because this is in a different family. It's the only member of the family currently, but it's the barrel finish select. These are distiller select. This is barrel finish select. It's one of these whiskeys finished in a second barrel. And of course it happens to be our bourbon. So we take a batch of wood reserve bourbon that we could bottle just like this, but instead of bottling it, we rebarrel it and it goes into a second new charred barrel for a finishing process. We did not invent finishing, never would claim to have invented finishing. Of course, think about the great single malts that have long been finished again in ports and sherries and Madeiras and cognacs, etc. Second barrel to add another layer of flavor. But I wanted to be American. I wanted to do something that no one else was doing. Let's finish in a new charred barrel. Not a barrel that had been used before. Nothing against that because we've done that in our master's collection with Chardonnay finish and Pinot Noir finish and others. But let's do something different. If we have our own cooperage, let's create a unique barrel to finish wood preserve in. No one had ever done that before. No one has ever made a finished barrel specifically for the whiskey that's going to be finished in it. And we did. This barrel is toasted and charred, but different than the Woodford barrel. Now, I've, I've already said Woodford Reserve barrel has been toasted and charred. I didn't tell for, for how long. It's a 10 minute toast in a 25 second, basically a number three char. 10 minutes, 25 seconds. The Woodford Double Oak barrel is 40 minute toast. Wow, four times longer in a five second char. I, that's, you wouldn't even call that a one char. It's, a, it's an extremely light char, but it's a new charred barrel. And we put fully mature wood for reserve, about 95 proof or so in the second barrel, and it finishes for one additional year. And the color has doubled compared to the original bourbon. It's all natural color because it's a straight bourbon. We can't add anything to this whiskey but pure water. And the aroma 
is out of balance. It's all about sweet aromatics, butterscotch, caramel, smoky, a maple syrup, chocolate, vanilla. It's all about that second barrel. It smells like a dessert, but it's wood for reserve in there. So as we get deep into it, and it's certainly as we taste, you're going to find the spice and the grain and the wood and the fruit and floral because it's this whiskey finished in the second barrel. That second barrel gives us that rich layer, that finish of the sweet aromatics. And also 90.4 proof. Wow. So I think you might get our message. Everything we do is about flavor, flavor presentation, flavor emphasis. With our bourbon being the balance of flavor, the five areas of flavor, rye being focused on spice of the five areas, malt being focused on grain of the five areas, wheat being focused on the, the, the fruit of the five areas, and double oak focusing on the sweet aromatics of the five areas of flavor. The one area we don't really focus on is wood because you can go over the top on wood. And um, maybe that's where our, our master's collection batch proof comes in. So I hope everybody's had a taste of our five core products. And if we want to taste the batch proof, we can do that as well because it's, it's a permanent member of our family, but it's in the master's collection. So it is very limited. It comes out once a year in the spring. The batch proof will vary according to how the barrels are presenting themselves. But this is approximately a hundred barrel batch. And it's going to go into this bottle once we add water to it. But instead of adding water to that batch, we present it exactly at the proof the barrels have given us. And this year, it was 123.6 proof. Because we go into the barrel relatively low, but because we heat cycle, we heat our warehouses in the winter, every barrel of wood reserve gains proof as it matures. So our proof goes up. The lowest I've ever seen is 110 proof barrel end up at 112 point something proof. And the highest I've seen is 110 proof end up at 140.1 proof. So that's a big range. And it all depends on when the warehouse location the barrel is set. How warm does it get in the winter? How warm does it get in the summer? Because those hot, dry conditions will drive more water out of the barrel than alcohol. We're still losing alcohol during the angel share process. But more water means the proof will increase. Very unusual for a distillery in ours is very unusual. I hope you realize that. So you're going to get a lot of wood character in the batch proof because, again, there's been no water added to it. As you add water, the fruit, the floral, the other notes start to open up. But by itself, it's, it's quite an impactful flavor approach. Okay. I think we've covered pretty much everything across the family. I'm going to make sure my iPhone is working here. So if we have any questions, we'll be able to, to see those. Okay. If uh, anybody has any questions, please send them through and I'll see if we can get those going here. Well, we may have covered everything so well, we don't have any questions, which is, which is perfectly fine. So we do have something else we could talk about um, as any questions come through, and that is coming up in September, the Kentucky Derby, September 5th. I don't know if you're a horse racing fan or a Kentucky Derby fan, but this is Derby 146, and it's the, only the second Derby in 146 consecutive years that has not been run on the first Saturday in May because of, of COVID. The last time was in 1945 at the end of the Second World War and the running was delayed because of the end of war events and celebrations and things like that. 
and it was run in June in 1945. So September 5th, the Kentucky Derby is going to be run at Churchill Downs. And of course, we're so proud to be the official presenter of the Kentucky Derby. This will be our third year as the presenting sponsor of the Kentucky Derby. And this will be, goodness gracious, our 22nd year of being the official bourbon. And I like to say not only we're the official bourbon of the Kentucky Derby, we're the first and only official bourbon of the Kentucky Derby, which is just tremendous when you think that for over 120 years, the Kentucky Derby never endorsed a bourbon in Kentucky. And after we were launched several years later, they recognized that Wood Reserve was something special and something they wanted to partner with. So we began in 1999, Derby 125, to be the first and only official bourbon of the Kentucky Derby. And that's been a lot of fun. And of course, the, um, the, the race is, is so exciting. And we've been able to, to introduce a couple of great programs at Churchill Downs. Number one was the, and it still is going on, the $1,000 mint julep program. People ask, what do I get for a $1,000 mint julep? You get to give to a good cause because the proceeds go to charity. But you get one of these beautiful gold or silver custom-made, numbered, hand-engraved, special derby cups presented in an oak box lined in silk. Just a great presentation and a unique drink each year. So the $1,000 mint julep has become quite a tradition at the derby. And just three years ago, we uh, presented a whole new drink to uh, the derby goers at Churchill Downs, and that was the Wood Reserve Spire. Of course, the Twin Spires is the famous image of the Kentucky Derby of Churchill Downs, and ours is the Wood Reserve Spire. And it plays off our flavor presentation, certainly of our bourbon, and because uh, Wood Reserve has some cranberry notes in it, berry notes, it has some citrus notes in it. So it's a, a very refreshing drink, the Wood Reserve Spire, which is a combination of lemonade, cranberry juice, and Wood Reserve, and a lemon twist. And you might think, that doesn't sound very good. It's absolutely delicious drink because only a bourbon like Wood Reserve can pull that off. And the Wood Reserve Spire last year almost outsold the mint julep at Churchill Downs. So a lot of people are falling in love with the Spire. And if you go to the Wood Reserve website, you can certainly see that recipe. It's very easy to make. Okay, I think we've got some, here we go. Got some questions here finally. It's my fault I couldn't read them because I was looking at the wrong page. What's my favorite summer cocktail? Well, the Spire certainly, as we just talked about. But my go-to cocktail is, for summertime, a Wood Reserve Thoroughbred. It's basically our adaptation of, of a mule, but we don't ride mules and we don't put mules in the Kentucky Derby, so a thoroughbred is a name for it. It's Wood Reserve, ginger beer, but I make it a cocktail. I put a little dash of bitters in it, sweeter, uh, some aromatic bitters, like a Angostura, and then a big twist of lime. So the Wood Reserve thoroughbred, ginger beer, Woodford, bitters, and lime. And that's a refreshing drink. Okay. The mash bill for the rye, just to remind everyone, is 53% uh, rye, 33% corn, 14% malted barley. 53, 33, 14. 53 rye is it. Okay. All right. Have we had shortages of the product with the bourbon boom? Yes and no. We have never had a shortage of our bourbon because we have, as one of our uh, colleagues who's retired now, um, used to say, we plan for success. So we had planned for success. So we've never run out of bourbon. We've run out of rye, malt, wheat, and we've run out of double oaked, but never the core bourbon. And double oak, we ran out the first year. We, we had produced what we thought was a, a year's demand, the supply. It was gone in three weeks. So we were out for a whole year because it takes a year to finish, a one-year finish. 
so people thought that Woodford Reserve Double Oaked was a here, here, there, and gone, and it wasn't. It came back, and it's it's here. We are working very hard to make sure it doesn't run out, as we are across the other three expressions. But again, as I mentioned earlier, they may or may not be there each and every day, but they're there on a on an annual basis. Yes, but never have run out of bourbon. We're not going to run out of bourbon. We we are building new warehouses. We're expanding the distillery. We're making sure. There's a good supply of our bourbon. Okay. Let me see this one. What is the benefit of using pot stills? A pot stills, as are used to make single malt whiskeys in, in Europe, as they are used to make um, cognacs, for example, um, are batch processes. They're not continuously run. And that gives you a great degree of control a um, uh, uh, very hands-on approach to shaping the flavor that comes off during the course of distillation. And they're going to allow you to capture more delicate character and or heavy character and or both, depending on what your flavor profile goal is. So a continuous still, which we use at our other distilleries, I'm not criticizing a continuous still at all, uh, you do sacrifice a little bit of the finer flavor elements for efficiency. But again, pot stills are expensive to run and laborious, but they can allow you to, to bring up forward some really nice flavor profiles. So that's the advantage of a pot still is flavor development, flavor presentation. Good question. What does nose in the bourbon tell you? Well, that's a good question. It tells you a whole lot because think about this. 85% of what we taste is through our sense of smell. And you've all read or heard, uh, if, you, if you pinch your nose and you bite an onion, you won't, can't tell the difference between an apple and an onion. Well, that's true. We've been trained wearing Olympic grade um, nose clips. And my gosh, when you close off your sense of smell of aroma, how it deadens the product. It really does. And so the sense of smell is so important. And also you're not splashing alcohol in your nose. The alcohol, as it begins to impact the palate, will begin to deaden your sense of taste. But keeping that nose fresh, that olfactory um, uh, presentation um, clean is going to allow you to enjoy a glass of whiskey, beer, wine, uh, so much easier. So we actually nose our barrels more often than we taste because we're trained to do that, of course. But the, you, can, you can sample a whole lot of barrels nosing them versus tasting them because, again, you don't get that palate fatigue as you nose. And if you're trained to do it, of course, it's even, it's even better. So nosing will tell you certainly the delicate notes. Uh, it's not going to deaden your senses. So, again, those really nice, delicate fruit and floral and some of the spice notes are going to be uh, more accessible to the overall experience through aroma. Good question. Mixed drink for Woodford. Oh, that's a good one. Um, uh, the world is crazy about old fashions now. I'm not. I mean, I don't, don't dislike an old fashioned, but give me a Manhattan, a well-made Manhattan and that's my favorite mixed drink or, or cocktail, I could say, because we've talked about the thoroughbred and the spire. Those technically are mixed drinks um, or highballs. But this classic cocktail is a Manhattan. And um, depending on your vermouth, I would like to have two ounces of Woodford and bourbon is my go to Wood Reserve bourbon, two ounces of Wood Reserve bourbon, an ounce of sweet vermouth. And I like to use a nice one. And there's a lot of good ones out there. So you're going to start to vary your flavor presentation. Couple dashes of bitters, and I'll go with a, a, an aromatic bitter. Stir in the glass. I make it in the glass. I'm lazy. I'm not making a pitcher or something like that. Stir it in the glass. Then add my ice, and I use I use ice cubes. I'm not using a big a big single block of ice or sphere. I'm not using crushed ice. I like ice, uh, it's standard cubes. And then um, if you can find them, a wood reserve cherry. 
with reserved cherry from bourbon, uh, bourbon barrel foods. Um, cherries aged and marinated in, with reserve. And, you know, and maybe a little bit of orange. So that's my favorite, my favorite cocktail. Okay, Oop, let's get that going here. It's the, okay, and let me read this again. Uh, it's a batch. Okay, all right. The batch is in a question of about batch proof. Now, as we are batching barrels for Woodford Reserve standard product, we'll put together approximately 100 barrels. And again, some barrels will be in the one teen, some will be in the one twenties, some will be in the one thirties. So we'll get a we'll get a, a batch proof, and it's going to vary batch to batch. Now we have made that batch based on a, a recipe of of barrel flavor as we're going through inventory. Oh, those are spicy barrels, those are fruity barrels. Every barrel has its own personality, every production date has its personality. So we're gonna bring in barrels that will that as they build will create this very complex balanced flavor profile. So once we got that batch together at that 120 plus proof, you can't taste it and go, yeah, that's Woodford. It should be Woodford, but you can't be exactly right. So we're gonna proof that down to about 94 proof. In other words, we're gonna add water to it in the batch tank and mix it up, agitate it for hours. And then we'll taste that. Does it taste like Woodford? Yeah, green light. Reduce it to 90.4 and bottle it. No, it's not quite the balance. It needs some more spice or it needs some more fruit or it needs some more wood character. And we'll bring in some barrels as needed to adjust the flavor profile. And the proof will go up a little bit because they will of course be foolproof barrels. And then we'll take it back down to 94 and taste it again. And finally, after those adjustments, we can go to bottling. So the batch proof is intended and would have been a bottling of Woodford Reserve, but it hasn't had those final adjustments. And that's why each batch proof, if you, if you put water in it at home and take it down to 90.4 proof, it'll taste different than the other batch proof. And it might not be exactly Woodford. And that makes the batch proof really fun and special. It's Woodford in process. And that's getting to see our process in an intermediate state, which I think is fun. So again, every year the proof, the proof could be identical next year because we might say, well, let's just do that batch because it's all about timing and ready for bottling or it's gonna be different. And so far in three years, it's been different each year. In, in this last year, just by a few, few proof points. So very, very close. Okay, what is the process for double, double oaked? Okay, that is another family we have um, of expressions called the distillery series. And the distillery series is sold only in Kentucky. And most of it is sold only at the Wood Reserve Distillery Visit Experience, the gift shop. But we do allow some other uh, establishments in Kentucky, uh, retail establishments to have some of it as well, bars, restaurants, and package stores, but it's only sold in Kentucky. And Double Double Oak has been such an overwhelming favorite. So many people ask for it. It's now a permanent member. So we release three distillery series a year. Double Double comes out in a very well, late winter, early spring. And then over the course of the year, we have two new unique releases and then back into Double Double Oak again. And Double Double Oak is Double Oak but instead of being finished for one year, it's finished for two years. It's not, it's not going in another barrel uh, other than the original double oaked barrel. So it's doubling the double oaked process. So double double is a finish for two years. And yes, we've experimented with three years and we've experimented with four years and they haven't worked. So double double is as long as it gets. Double oaked and double double oaked. And if, despite what you think, double double oaked is not even sweeter than double oaked. It becomes spicy, spicier as the wood spices begin to build. So it's a really different product. And of course, as I mentioned, people are going crazy for it. Have you considered a Solera process? Well, we sort of have a Solera process in that we make a batch of Woodford 
and we bottle it and there's always a remnant from that batch and then we put the next batch on top of that and we bottle it and there's always a remnant and we put the next batch on top of that so in the batch tank there could there will be many 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 batches in small amounts mixed through so if you want to call that a slayer process it is so there's always something from the previous the previous the previous the previous batch and then all of a sudden it's time to bottle rye whiskey and everything's cleaned out we start with rye so again they don't go for 100 years like some port or brandy might but again batches will have some of the previous batch in it so i think that's sort of a solera process and that just helps build consistency or maintain consistency Oh, is the tasting done by people or machines as they approve? It's all about us. I've never met a machine that drank wood for reserve. I've never seen a laptop or an iPhone drinking a glass of wood for reserve. Um, so you can analyze using, of course, uh, equipment, and we do. But all approval is based on the human element. And that's myself, oh, System Master Stiller, Elizabeth McCall, and our taste panel who are tasting the product and approving the product. And I'm the ultimate approval in all the master's collection distillery series. These products that we've created have been under my uh, leadership and I'm the one who says that tastes the way I want it to. And of course, Elizabeth plays a large role in that now. So it's people, because we're the ones who drink it, not the machines. So it's a real product made by real people. Okay. I think we're getting, we're, what's new coming down the pipeline and we're almost out of time here. It looks like what's new coming down the pipeline. One thing I could tell you on, I hope you all be looking for it. And I certainly hope towers will have some, I'm sure they will. And it is wood reserve Baccarat, Baccarat, the French crystal company that makes the crystal bottles for some of the finest cognacs, and single malt scotches in the world. They heard about a project we had and asked if we would be the first American whiskey to have its own Baccarat presentation, crystal bottle, French crystal. And we said, yes, I mean, what a great honor. And this is Woodford Reserve Baccarat, which will be the highest priced mainline, uh, mainline priced bourbon in history, everyday price at retail, probably $2,000. And it's wood reserve bourbon finished for at least four years in the finest XO cognac casks and then presented in this unique crystal decanter wood reserve Baccarat. Baccarat fell in love with it so much that we didn't use the original name we had intended for the product. They said, you can use our name. They've never let someone use their name so it's Woodford Reserve Baccarat, and it's 90.4 proof, just like the rest of our family, an elegant, elegant whiskey. And again, it will be limited. Um, we don't make a lot of it, and they don't hand blow a lot of our bottles either. They're very busy people over in France. So I think if, you, if you, you'll see a presentation, uh, you'll certainly agree it's a very handsome bottle. Okay. I think we've got, do you have an experimental series? No, we don't. We experiment. But think about this. You can't, if you bottle experiment, it's no longer experiment. The experiment is an experiment. You're learning from it. You, you take that barrel or those barrels all the way to the day they're dry, they're empty, and you have recorded and learned everything about that process that whiskey that barrel that recipe because they get better and they get worse they get better they get worse they never get better they never get worse you don't know until you run them into the ground so we do experiment but you never bottle experiment and you learn from experiments and those experiments give us double oaked or double double or rye or malt or wheat or any of the master's collections all start as experiments and if the experiment works out then you can make it a larger amount so we never bottle an experiment they're to be learned from never bottle an experiment 
That's at least my take on the world. Okay. I think I had one more question that I didn't catch here. Oh, okay. The difference between toasting and charring. Um, toasting is applying heat to the interior of the barrel, but not burning the barrel, not setting the wood on fire. So you can, you can radiate heat inside the barrel for a long period of time because you're not burning the wood up. And that's the toasting process. So that, it, that heat, which is nowhere the heat of burning, um, the combustion, uh, so it's a lower grade heat, but it's still hot. You know, it's in the 600 degree range. Um, is going to break down certain compounds in the oak, which are going to give you a lot of sweet characteristics. Charring the barrels on fire, and of course, any of us who've been around a campfire or something know you can only burn wood for so long, and it's gone. So you can't burn a barrel or char a barrel as long as you toast it. And that heat, of course, is dramatically higher two and a half, three times higher than the toasting process. And it's going to create other flavor compounds in the oak. So again, toasting is not burning the wood, but exposing it to high heat. Charring is burning the wood at very high heat. Okay. All right, Jasmine. Are you still there? There she is. You're on mute. I'm here. Sorry for all the technical difficulties. <laughs> thank you so much. That was so informative. And we had a lot of great questions. So thank you for yes. that extra time. And uh, I don't see any additional questions. So I think we can wrap up now. So thank you again, Chris. And I hope we get to do this again soon. Uh, I hope we can as well. And thanks again, everyone, for joining us tonight. And I hope you enjoyed a taste of American whiskey across the Wood Preserve family. And thanks yes. again for your all's questions. Okay. Yes. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye-bye.